Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois, and we are here for another week to highlight some of the amazing things our people are doing amidst the ongoing pandemic. We have a very exciting show filled with laughter and vibes with the team from Food Hub 758, who will chat with us about their new app, which is bringing restaurants and customers together virtually. And for Link Up, we head to Canada for an update with the Consul General, Cheryl Francis. Our first interview explores the world of online business, food, delivery, people, and innovation, all available at our fingertips. Food Hub 758 is an online order and delivery platform which connects clients to restaurants through the use of an app on your cell phone. Let's meet the team behind the scenes. Food Hub 758, hello guys and welcome to Stepping Up and our first interview today. And I am here with David Francis and Jumani Paul and they represent a fraction of the managing directors of this new exciting app that is about to launch, well they have launched. Food Hub 758. Good afternoon, guys. Afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Thank all? you for having us. Doing great, thank you. It's my pleasure having you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Food Hub 758, who, what, when, why, who's going to start? It's um, a group of young, techn technologically minded individuals who came together to create a sort of a digital online platform which allows for um, e commerce between restaurants and food providers and delivery. Um, well, and the public. Mm -hmm. So what it does is that we engage restaurants and food providers and we also engage food couriers and delivery drivers. Everybody's working on the platform and able to transact commerce. Nice. By cash and what we're trying to push forward now is e-commerce where everything is cashless. Wow. And it's going with the theme of everything COVID right now is, you know, is in the sky or in the cloud yes. and it's, you know, you know, no touch, no contact, yes. right? So David, let us know, what do you think is the most exciting thing if you have to sum it up in one phrase about Food Hub 758? Make your own money. Food Hub is a site that empowers people in St. Lucia. So mm -hmm. it gives you the potential to create your own business and basically feed yourself, for want of a better term. So we allow persons who have just their home kitchen, persons who would feel like they have to have a storefront and a brick and mortar business, they have to pay a rent, pay a light bill. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with Food Hub. You could actually start your business from your phone using the data that you're already paying for weekly to go on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, mm -hmm. all of those things. Food Hub is available right there to you. So a young tech minded person can basically start their own kitchen from their own phone, start their own business from their own phone at their own house with basically no overheads. Mm -hmm. And you know that your product will be fulfilled and delivered to your customer via our delivery drivers using our system in a manner that you would be able to capture your clients' data, get feedback, have order reports, order managers. You get a lot of feedback for our process, you know? So it's a, it's a way that you can build your business from nothing to something for, if, if I can use that term on TV, if I'll be <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> nothing to something. Nothing to something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something everybody can identify with. Yeah. Um, so let's break it down because you know, you know, the technical stuff is not my forte. Right. Let's talk about who is the first person in your app to probably benefit. Because you know, in getting all that background information from you guys, I realize along the chain of, I guess, is it production or the value supply chain? Right. From where it starts to the end goal, there are a lot of people along the lines who could work and who can benefit from being a part of right. Food Hub 758. So let us know. Let's guess, I guess. So who's the first person to ben um, benefit? Well, the first thing I would say about um, our platform is that, first of all, it's available on Android. So mm -hmm. it's in the Play Store and in the App Store. So your Android and your iPhone, you can use it. Mm -hmm. We're also available online at foodhub758.com. So the people we target are, again, restaurants mm -hmm. and food providers. So you could be, you know, ex established restaurants, for instance, you know, um, Daniel Soup Bay. Shop. There you go. <laughs> Daniel Soup Shop. And you so let's take it from there. Daniel Soup Shop. <laughs> Daniel and I want to come on soup, um, Food Hub. Right. What is that process like? And what is the benefit to me? Well, D I think David, you could just. It's, it it's a real simple process to become a business on Food Hub. You go to our website, you go to the top right hand corner, you click more, and then you click sign up as a business. We mm -hmm. get instant notification. Once we get that notification, we can put you on. And you could be on and running, having a business running, working, mm -hmm. collecting money within 24 hours. And it will allow direct... Direct payment via our, our integrated system, our mm -hmm. integrated payment portal. So we allow any business person who has a PayPal, all you have to do is go on PayPal. Once you have a bank account, mm -hmm. go on PayPal, sign up, you get a PayPal business account. Mm -hmm. And our system allows you to use that PayPal business account as if you had your own Shopify store, if you did your nice. own website. 
So your money goes directly to you. We don't touch your money. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's yeah. something yeah. that people could agree with. They don't want yeah. anybody touching their money. So if you get your money directly, as a business owner, mm -hmm. it makes you feel more comfortable. You're not working through us. We are just the, the vehicle, yeah. basically, to get you where you want to go. Absolutely. And I think another important um, aspect to you know, what you guys are talking about is the fact that um, it's, it creates access in ways that have never probably been possible before exactly so as you're saying anyone could start their business anyone. any restaurant and they have this direct access so it could be a case where like and you know the daily struggle for a lot of people is like what is there to eat and you know sometimes yes. you find yourself going to the same restaurant because exactly. yes. you just don't have the time and you don't want to go through that but it creates access Right. That's a, yeah, that's a great point you made because mm -hmm. um, it's it's basically bringing the physical to the digital. So yeah. the same way a food store would go and get a shop front in the mall and decorate the the, 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 the shop front and and lay it out in their own way, um, it's the same thing we offer on mm -hmm. our platform. So you get into the into um, food up seven five eight and you put probably your the, pictures the pictures of the of the items you think that you know mm -hmm. that are the most popular items mm -hmm. and then you you can have you know as many items as you want in there mm -hmm. and you know so we just create a digital platform again it's like a digital sh yeah. shop front and from that you know people come in and then based on how you set up your, sh your shop mm -hmm. that's how you're going to get activity as well and um going back to your first question so we have the restaurants and um food providers and again you know established restaurants you could have somebody making cupcakes you know at their home mm -hmm. could as well sell you know sell mm -hmm. to their friends attract your friends and on the other side of the spectrum we have delivery drivers and couriers you know mm -hmm. independent as well and they link up with the stores when you know you we look into the gig economy as well so people have some free time they want to make some extra money a lot of taxi drivers right now are coming to us we know a lot of them as well they're saying you know they want to be on board with the system because things are a bit um, depressed right now yeah. and that offers people a way to make you know do do buy you know opportunity. exactly we want to create opportunity not only that everybody goes mm -hmm. to nic and you know uh, and has to engage in that economically program but yeah. there are other ways uh, other things that can be done as well to supplement that mm -hmm. yeah. for the betterment of everybody so can you give like a direct pitch to anybody who has a vehicle and probably they now know that they have the opportunity to jump on board with food hub and from what i understand david is that you could you don't have to even meet you the point is that you have an arrangement and the same thing is you get paid for your delivery and i guess the money it, it hits when it hits the account exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. all you when need so speak to how it. can <laughs> let anybody know as a driver how they can you know be part as in terms of the delivery part um so drivers we're careful with who we want as drivers okay. and, and we're not saying that because we want to discriminate from anybody um, it's a situation where we want our customers to feel comfortable with the persons who are one handling their food okay. and other items and two who are coming to their homes because security is a very serious issue for us. Mm -hmm. And we take the security aspect very seriously. Mm -hmm. So we monitor our drivers, we monitor our orders. So what, are, what, are, what would you say is some of the things you do to, like, I guess, vet your drivers or the persons you choose the, to? Yes, yeah, so a driver who wants to apply with our system must have a certificate of character, police certificate of character, okay. a valid driver's license mm -hmm. and valid insurance. That's what we require right okay, now. Okay, that's not bad. That's, it's that's not, not bad, that's not, yeah. but it's a bare minimum to allow yeah, our customers yeah, yeah. to feel comfortable enough. But we have our own checks and balances in the background. Like, we monitor our drivers. We, yeah. we monitor order times. We order deliveries. Yeah, to see. So, if anything is off, we would know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess you might have a system where you have a zone. So, if you have driver A and you're in just the car estate area. Yes. And then if you have somebody more in the cashier's area, you, yes. you monitor yeah. and you decide. Exactly. So, let's exactly. break it down now for the benefit and the opportunity for customers. What is it besides just the access? How can we enjoy Food Hub 758? Well, one of the first ads we launched, um, and it was in the pilot phase as well, was um, an ad with one of the local influencers. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about, it was in a funny way, but it was talking about <laughs> trying to, you at home, and you may not have money for food right now. Yeah. And your mother's abroad, your sister's abroad, yeah. you know, auntie abroad. They can come onto the website, log in, order the food for you with their card while you're in St. Lucia. And you can either yeah. get it delivered to you, you can go for it. Why so some people it going offers, to abuse that? <laughs> well, that's perfect, you know, and, and it, it gives, a, it gives a, 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 um, an alternative to, you know, going yeah. to Western Union, standing in a long yeah, line, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and even now, people who even give remittances to family, maybe they want to watch their doll a bit more and, and make sure, you, you know, what you, you're doing that's something true. progressive with it. So, yeah. um, and you could probably do a cool thing, like have a credit, like, you know. Somebody just send a hundred dollars for you and like your food set for the week, my girl. Yes. You that, understand something exactly like that? Exactly. That know? is actually part of the vision for it because people can go beyond just, okay, you're a restaurant, you can sell a plate of food. That's mm. one thing. But 
we we actually see it as going beyond that somebody who has like say, let's say creative creativity in them so mm -hmm. you could mix and match products and sell it as something brand new so yeah. you have a basket you have a bottle of wine you have yeah. some goodies like chocolates cakes and whatnot separately you can sell them individually yes but if you put them together you add value to everything yeah. and then you sell a package it becomes right. an experience you know so, so you're creating opportunity you create opportunity for everybody and who has creativity and i think it's really amazing what technology and you know it sounds like a well thought through yeah. application and I, I and i guess you know i have to come back to as young people what were there any what is the difficulty or did you face any difficulties in bringing up this and we spoke about it um was this in the making before COVID or after COVID? Well, Give us that story a little bit. Yeah, funny enough, it was something that came up organically. It was before COVID, and it's something we were developing with other, other partners. And obviously, with COVID, that sort of accelerated the whole process. So we, we kind of came on board and launched it, and we have it here right now. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's, um, that's how it came about, more mm -hmm. or less. Mm -hmm. um, One of the major difficulties, I would say, that we experience as young professionals, because um, Dwight, who is our CEO, our executive officer, he is basically a business mind, but he has a day job. Popi, who is our Popi Jumani, <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is basically That's our CFO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he manages our money, <laughs> but at the same time, he also has a day job. We all have day jobs, so yeah. time becomes the main issue. So yeah. you have to dedicate. You have to be dedicated at the end of the day. Yeah. That was our main, in my view, that was our main difficulty yeah. right now. And I time. think that's a story of most entrepreneurs. You always have to find a way to balance the two, that yeah. you have this dream and you want to aspire to something, but then, you know, you have to pay the bills you and you need that kind exactly. of security. Absolutely, absolutely. So being yeah. able to move through that and, you know, gentlemen and young gentlemen working together and yeah. bringing all your different skill sets together. I mean, I want to applaud you guys. Yeah. And thank you so much for stepping up. We, do, we also don't want to forget the ladies of Food Hub. We have some very, very key ladies in the background. Okay. Our IT genius is a lady. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and our, our marketing people are ladies and they're yeah. very brilliant. Young. We don't want to seem like Food Hub is a male oriented or yeah, <laughs> patriarchal cup you. at all. You. The ladies are Thanks for that. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, they were a bit shy and coming on board. Yeah, they, they, they didn't want to be on camera. But we, it's like that sometimes. Yeah, it's so like that sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, we have a nice balance. So, just yeah. to wrap up, let's go through the app let's okay. go through the app um briefly so i have this on my phone on my laptop food hub 758 yeah, i'm very the, hungry there you go what are we feeling to eat right now um right now our customers seem to be gravitating towards burns food truck oh yes yeah. big up burns, <laughs> big up burns <laughs> all the what's time. the name of the place in boss you again Sugar City or something like that? Where, where they have the food? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I they just have a name, they're calling sure. it. Oh, no, Sugar not City sure. is lower down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the place where they sell in the food bosses, you know. By the fire yes. station. Yes. By, 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 by the fire station. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the way our so app works. Burns, and I heard that he has really good burgers. Yeah, right? Burns has excellent All burgers. Right. It's, it's Angus beef and it's really good. Yeah, nice. people are, people so, we are feeling for burgers, David. Okay, so the way our app works is that you go to our homepage. Mm -hmm. Our homepage is basically the welcome. It tells you you're at Food Hub. Um, the first thing you'll see is our live chat will pop up on the right side. You can mm -hmm. talk directly to us using the live chat if you have any questions whatsoever. But we've made it as simple as possible. So the homepage has two bars. You pick whether you want delivery or pickup. And mm -hmm. after that, you click the next bar, which is our location bar. Once you click that bar, it takes you directly using Google Maps to the address that you're at anywhere in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. So the restaurant knows directly where the customer is and so does the driver. Oh, that's cool. So the customer also have an idea of the distance that the driver will be traveling to deliver his food. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as you, that happens and you actually log into the website, then once you get that, it'll show you our restaurant. So right now Burns Food Truck pops up. Mm -hmm. So we pick our favorite orders from Burns Food Truck, which for Poopy is the Angus beef. <laughs> 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 all right, so once you get the Angus beef in your cart, mm -hmm. all right, Burns Food Truck gives you uh, several options. You can put bacon, nice. blue cheese, cheddar, and all these kind of things. And once you get them Perfect. into your cart, it's a simple process from there. You just select from yeah. these options, and then you also pick your payment method. So Although we're trying to move away from the cash system because yeah. of COVID and social distancing and whatnot, mm -hmm. we want our customers to be very safe. Mm -hmm. um, we encourage our drivers to use masks yeah. and those kinds of things, but we, we have several payment options. So you options. encourage them to pay even though it's pickup or delivery online? Online. Okay. That's the first point of call. But 
-hmm. Knowing how things are these days, not everybody has a card. Yes. And we don't want restaurants to lose business based on yep. somebody okay. not having a card. So we'll allow the drivers also to accept cash in certain circumstances. Our, our app actually takes cognizance of that. Mm -hmm. So once you get into the app, it'll save your location. So the driver will have a very good idea of where the customer is. Mm -hmm. And they'll also have certain information about the customer that will be put in, right? The name of the customer, their address, their, their mobile phone number. And if they have discount coupons, we also integrated yeah. discounts into our restaurants. Nice. So and I'm sure you'll have a place where you'll have like my personal, I guess, order history. So I could probably re frequent that, uh, yes. etc. Yes, 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 yes. So Just once like you log in on the app. clothes and stuff. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So once you, once you know to shop at Amazon and all of these apps, yeah. you yeah, should be able to use the same thing. thing. It's really cool. And one same. thing to say about the cash um, aspect of it, um, we know cash is, is, is still a bit of a dicey issue. So one thing we, we want to say as well is that restaurants, we give you full flexibility of accepting the drivers you want to work with. You don't okay. have to work with all our drivers. And then pretty soon they could say, well, you know, these are our designated drivers. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That's what we want. Those you want, to, those those you want to come and work and, yeah. and be on the platform. So mm -hmm. they could, they, so that integrates everybody and everybody feels safe. So if you have, you want to do cash deliveries, at least, you know, the drivers you work with will do these deliveries for you. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, like I said, it's like Amazon, so you should be doing everything cashless. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to shift the culture. So that's what we want to be part of the process going towards e-commerce. Yeah. Nice. And, you know, the next time it comes about, I mean, COVID is, is, is a, a crisis that came. And like many people say, we have to find the opportunities in crises and make the best of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do right now with Food Up 75. So putting it in yeah. the context of Daniel's soup shop, Daniel has a cousin <laughs> who owns a scooter. Yes. He doesn't have a job right now. Yes. But he could be making $20 a delivery, twelve fifty a delivery. And mm -hmm. it, could in, it could add up over time. He could yeah. deliver several things at once. Mm -hmm. and make let's say a hundred dollars for his day whereas yeah. his bike could have sat down there he'd have done nothing for the day otherwise and you can work on your own time so you switch on as a driver when you're ready you switch off yeah. it's up to like you work your own hours for today. yeah you're done for nice. today you, you wanted a little squander pile for the day you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to take out your little bird you know yeah. that's really cool yeah well once again guys thank you so much and i want to applaud you guys for stepping up during um the whole COVID 19 and you know as we all say it's it's in some places, it's like really horrible for everybody, but there's opportunity. There's opportunity out there, there's and it's just to find it. I just want to give one big up to our CEO, CEO, um, CEO out there, Dwight Liskaris. He's in the TV room out there. Big yeah. up, Dwight. Yeah, <laughs> big up, Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, behind the scenes. But we thank you so scenes. much. So probably next time, you know, we'll have drink 758. <laughs> ah. Well, how are you? I think you're reading our mind now. <laughs> <laughs> so drinks. <laughs> thank you very much for having us. Thank, thank you very so much. much. So we encourage everybody to go to www.foodhub758.com and see how the platform works. All right. Get the apps on the Play Store. And the App Store, so available well. right now. We're also on IG and Facebook. There you go. <laughs> there you have it, guys. We'll be right back. Because of COVID-19, I don't know when I'll be at work again. Because of the coronavirus, we lost 80% of our revenue. How can the government bank start the economy? Corona took us unexpected, so it's not like we can blame the government, but we're just uncertain of the future. As a bus driver, how do that stimulus package help me? Yeah, since the coronavirus, things have not been the same. I just want to know, what would the government do to help single mothers take care of their children? Concerning the stimulus package, I would like to know how it would be implemented. Tune in on Sunday as we present the Solution Economic and Recovery Resilience Plan. There's something there for everyone. Together, we will continue to build a new and stronger solution. Welcome back. We just heard from the guys at Food Hub 758, and they wanted me to tell you that you can get the app for free. So go on and download it now. And now it's time for our Link Up segment. Today, we will be linking up with Cheryl Francis, Consul General for St. Lucia in Canada. She lets us know how the office has continued to work during the pandemic and how they are assisting persons who are interested in coming home. Hello, guys, and welcome to our Link Up segment. And for this Link Up, we head to Canada and we're going to have a chat with the Consul General for St. Lucia in Canada. And her name is Miss Cheryl Francis. Hello, Miss Francis. How are you? Hello. Hello, Daniel. I am doing great. Thank you. How's the weather in Canada today? 
absolutely beautiful <laughs> not missing anything in san lucia it's over <laughs> 30 degrees the sun is shining and it's absolutely beautiful nice i'm happy to hear that so once again thank you for joining us for our link up segment and you know if link up we just try to reach out to anybody doing anything amazing in the whole covid 19 season and today we want to talk about what exactly are you up to in your office in Canada and how are you helping St. Lucia and the diaspora at this time? Okay, thank you, Danielle. First of all, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm more than delighted to say what's going on in my neck of the woods in Canada. And, you know, from the inception, um, when Canada, we were all faced with this pandemic, and um, Canada had to shut its doors like everybody else way back in March. We suddenly had to just rejig the way that we do operat our operations in the office. And um, our nationals can say that um, we have not once stopped on what we had to provide our nationals with. So we changed the way we do things. Apart from the fact that we had to shut down our offices, what we did is we transferred all our calls to our mobile phones, all mail come to my home. So it's, it's dealt with in an, in, in a, in a good fashion. Yes. And um, <laughs> we, we also, we have been able to take calls one-on-one -on -one with our nationals following up, checking up on them, seeing how they are doing. And you know, it, it, it has been good thus far. Nice. You mentioned that basically your office had to kick into gear or different gear when it was, you know, when the whole COVID thing started. So let us know some of the things that you used to do before COVID and let us know how the pandemic has changed basically your daily operations. Okay. Well, the, the main thing is the face-to-face -face interactions. Of course, the social distancing and being careful. We have not been able to see our usual nationals come into the office on a daily basis. However, mm -hmm. we get to talk to them on a regular basis. But honestly, I must say to you, what I'm pleased about coming out of all of this, we've been able to streamline our processes a lot better. We've been able to do things a lot more efficiently. Um, you know, for example, even payment, payment structures that, you know, we, we otherwise had very outdated methods of payment. We had been able to now provide our nationals with different forms of payment because now they can't come into the office to do it. So, you know, the debit, the credits, you know, email, email transfers sometimes. And, you know, all of that has made us realize that, you know, there's a different way to operate. And another thing that has made us very efficient, I would say, is the fact that we no longer have to dr drive or travel those long distances yeah. to get to the office. You know, most of us now, we, we work from home and you find that we wake up earlier. So we get into gear earlier. We don't have that yeah. time wasted. You you don't come home tired where you shut off and, and, you know, can't really get to the calls. But we have become a lot more efficient um, in managing those operations. And that, that, has really, that has really, you know, sh shone a light basically on the way we do operations. Nice. So we know that this week St. Lucia is receiving or is set to receive their first set of commercial flights. And, you know, it has been up in arms and it's something that I think internationally and everybody who's interested in coming home or to St. Lucia is monitoring the situation very closely. So let us know in Canada, how do you assist persons at this point who are interested in coming home? And what is the situation right now that obtains in Canada, Canada sorry, that other borders still open or closed? Well, not still open, but closed. So, you know, everywhere has their own, you know, I would say intricacies and, you know, what they're doing right now. And um, so how are you assisting St. Lucians in coming home right now? The good thing about Canada, Canada has really managed the pandemic very well, just as St. Lucia has. Um, I must, our borders are still closed in Canada. Um, they, there's still a travel ban for, for citizens of Canada. They basically say non-essential travel. And so citizens of Canada have not been traveling um, as much. And so the airlines, 
especially Air Canada, who was uh, slated to, tra- to start its first commercial flights on July 18th, has now cancelled all flights for July. So we are now looking at the 1st of August. But we have been encouraging all of our nationals to register with the consulate. And so we have a list of all of our nationals, I would hope, who have been stranded in Canada. And we've been liaising with them very frequently. Up until yesterday, I was calling up everyone because I know that most of them would have been concerned that the flights again have been canceled. And um, I think more or less for the airlines, it's that Yes, St. Lucia is open and we are ready to receive them, but it's coming back with the aircraft being empty and, you know, and citizens of Canada not traveling because they still have to do a 14 day quarantine when they return from their holiday. So that has not been helping in terms of getting getting persons from Canada to travel to St. Lucia. So we're looking to see something different happen in August. But for us at the consulate, we have been contacting our nationals just to update them, our websites, frequent calls, Facebook. We update them on what's going on. So as soon as the cancellations happened yesterday, I was on the phone speaking to, to nationals as to, you know, what the possibilities were, who was affected, who has issues, and just basically helping them to go through it. And, um, you know, we're just looking forward to, to, to doing, to getting somewhere in August, you know. And yeah, that's, that's sad news because my best friend is in Canada and... You know, we were gearing up for the 18th, you know, because we know we were monitoring it and stuff like that. But you see, that's the thing with this whole pandemic. You just never know and you have to be careful, but you still have to try to do what you have to do, you know, and you just have to be ready to just to move when the time is ready. So right now, some persons are actually looking at the option of going through the U.S. Once you have a U.S. visa. Mm-hmm. I have made several calls, um, you know, to various American airlines and, and U.S. airlines to find out if there's any any restrictions for St. Lucians traveling through the U.S. with a visa to, to St. Lucia. Yes, it's a roundabout. You know, we would have preferred a direct flight. But they, they have said to me that there are no restrictions. So there are some St. Lucians now looking at the possibility of going via the U.S. to come home because flights are available from the u.s to st lucia so i've been getting persons to register to go on to yeah. as you say register though can you just speak to the importance of registering because every anybody i guess might just ask like why must you have to register to get home and stuff like that so let us know how does the office support um um kick into gear and why is it important to register yeah, so we have asked, we've asked our nationals once they get, once they, they, they get in touch with our office, we take down all of their particulars. So once anything comes up, we are able to call them very quickly because sometimes even when you have a repatriation flight, it happens within days. The last mm-hmm. repatriation flight that I was successful in pulling together, May 24th, Uh, went very smoothly for those who had already called into the office. So it was easy for me to call them to say, can you get ready for May 24th? And most of them were were overjoyed to be able to do that. So, you know, they were able to get on. And that is the importance. Once we know you are there, we can contact you very easily to update you on anything that is happening. You know, and, um, you you know, so most importantly now, yesterday I was calling to just urge persons to go on to senusha.org. The pre-arrival form must be done before they can travel, before they can even book their flights. They need to get approval. And the reason for that is because, of course, um, our government uh, offices in St. Lucia have to ensure that they are quarantine space for those Mm -hmm. nationals coming home, um, either the home quarantine, your home has to be inspected. So all of these pre-checks have to be done. So I urge them to go on to register, get approval. And in Canada as well, I have provided a list of of COVID, of 
of centers that they can go to do their COVID test. So that as well has been provided so they can go get a test uh, seven, within seven days of travel. But first and foremost, they need to register, then get the test, and then they can head home. Wow. And I think it's important to remember that it is absolutely not business as usual. You cannot, before you could have just, you know, book your flight tonight and then the next day or the next, um, you know, a few days you could just hop on a flight and you never had to worry about these things. But there's so many, you know, besides just red tape, you know, all of what you mentioned. So all of that prevents people from doing exactly what they wish they could, how they want to. Well, like our prime minister, you know, even mentioned a couple of nights ago on his update that, you know, we sort of went through that with 9-11. Um, you know, yeah. all of these ha things had to change because of a situation. And it mm. takes all of us to have that buy-in, all of us to mm. take our precautions. This is a we thing. This is something that we all have to do together to make it work. And, and it's the same thing. So if you register, if you do all of the things that the officials are asking to do, I think it will all help us, especially those on the front line. You know, we always yeah. have to remember them. So, Ms. Francis, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, I was very much so enlightened about the whole process and how St. Lucians need to register. And if they, they want to come home, this is the process. Because at the end of the day, the government of St. Lucia at the same time is ensuring the safety of everybody while trying to make everybody happy at the same time. So we need to register, as you say, so that we could see when the opportunity pops up. You could just get to go. Yeah, and it's just basically all of the information that we have to share, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just knowing that they have the support in Canada from our office, you know, some of them, you know, uh, you know, they're very frustrated, you know, and we understand that. So somebody to share that, that with as well. I know it doesn't help much, but, you know, the support yeah, is... I get you. So, Ms. Francis, thanks again so much. Any final words from you and your office as we come to the end of our link up segment. Yes, I mean, I just want to assure our nationals um, who are stranded in Canada and those living in Canada that we are functional. Our office is, is open even 24 seven. Some persons call me after hours. So we want to assure you that we are there for you. Um, and, you know, to continue to liaise with the office, we will continue to provide you with updates. We are here to support you. And um, we hope that it all works out well for all of us in the end. And let us all just do this together and support each other. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Consul General has spoken. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. I had a lot of fun doing this week's installment of Stepping Up, getting to chat with the guys from Food Hub 758. Kudos to you for stepping up. To Ms. Francis and her office in Canada, thank you. If you know anyone in your community or anyone who has an amazing idea, feel free to send me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com. I'm Daniel Dubois. Join us next time and don't forget to keep stepping up. <laughs>